a state of super learning like you were when you were an infant. Yet there is a better and faster way even. The mind has two parts. The subconscious mind is the original brain and it can process 40 million bits of data from the environment every second. The mind is very powerful and very fast, but it's totally habitual. It's not creative. It can only play back what it learns. In evolution, the front part of the brain, the prefrontal cortex gives rise to consciousness. It's a small piece of the brain that is consciousness. Self or consciousness is an add-on option, and most people don't exercise the option. But note, it has, it can process only about 40 bits of data per second. The subconscious mind is one million times more powerful. While the subconscious mind is fast, the conscious mind is slow at processing. That's why when you're in an emergency or stress, you operate from this one because it can operate fast and handle lots of data. But the difference between the two is this is habitual. It is the conscious mind that is creative and can generate free will. The conscious mind can control anything in your entire body. They used to say there were parts of our body that were involuntary control. But now we know that's, that's not true. Look, for example, yogis can regulate their heartbeat, their blood pressure, or body temperature with conscious mind. So while the conscious mind can only handle a few things, the subconscious mind can do many, many thousands of tasks at the same time. Now recently, neuroscientists are talking about how your unconscious really shapes your life, your decisions. What they say, according to cognitive neuroscientists, we are conscious of only about 5% of our cognitive activity. Most people, 1% of their day is in the conscious mind. So every day, you, you create only from your creation mind, your conscious mind, only about 1% of what is going on in your life. And therefore, 95 to 99% of your life comes from your programming in your subconscious mind. So what this means is maybe uh, you were the child in the store and your parents said you do not deserve. 95% of the day, you will sabotage your life to make sure you do not deserve. And the reason why is the subconscious job is to create reality out of the program. And so therefore, if you have negative programming, 95% of the day, you will create that negative experience in your life. Now here's the problem. The conscious mind and the subconscious mind work together. So whatever the conscious mind focuses on, it can control, but what it's not focusing on, the subconscious mind control. So most of our day, we are thinking about the future or thinking about the past. That's with the conscious mind. So if the conscious mind's not paying attention to right now, then everything you're doing during the day is being run by the program that you got. But the problem is, because your mind is not, the conscious mind's not paying attention, then it does not see the program being played by the subconscious mind. So most of every day, you are not playing programs that you personally want, you're playing programs that you got from other people. But you didn't see those, pay, those programs, so when your life doesn't work, you say the, the universe does not support me. And yet the truth was, it was your own invisible behavior that sabotaged you. So what's important is some people say, well, maybe I just do some positive thinking. Which mind does the positive thinking, conscious or subconscious? The conscious mind, which works at 5% a day with a 40-bit processor. And when you're doing your consciousness, are you paying attention to what's going on? Who's running the show? The experiential programs from the subconscious mind and that is 95% of the day with 40 million bit processor. Does positive thinking work? 
do the math. And the issue is that it's very difficult to take a small processor and overpower the large processor. And you have to use what is called willpower with the emphasis on power to override. Now here is the second catch or the second problem. The subconscious mind is like a recorder tape player. It records an experience and then when you push the button, it plays the experience back. So then we take our conscious mind and we want to talk to the subconscious mind and change the program. Now think about it this way. You have a tape player and I give you a cassette with a program. You put the tape in and you push play. And the program is going, you say, I don't like the program. Then you go up to the tape player and you say, change the program, change the program. The issue is the tape will not change by doing that. But there are ways to change the program if you know how to push the record button. So your life does not reflect what you want. It reflects the program you were given. So one way out is consciousness. Just be conscious and then you don't play the tape. A second way out. Clinical hypnotherapy. Because that puts you back in the same brain state that you were in in the learning period. And then you can put a new program and rewrite the tape. Yet there is a better and faster way even. There's a group of new psychology modalities called energy psychology. There are many different versions. For example, holographic repatterning, body talk, EMDR, EFT. The one I am most familiar with is Psych K, P S Y C H K. These programs are like pushing the record button on the tape player. These programs can change a belief you had your entire life in maybe 15, 20 minutes. Many of them, like Psych K, create a state of super learning like you were when you were an infant. But I'm now going to show you how your thoughts go out and affect your life on the outside. EEG, you put wires on your skin and read the brain activity. MEG, the, the probe does not even touch the head. You can read your brain activity outside of your head. It's not magic. When a nerve carries a signal, it's like an electric wire. It has an electrical component, and so the electric component can be picked up by electrodes on the skin. But when a wire is carrying a current, it also has a magnetic field around it. The magnetic field passes through the skin. Your thoughts are not contained in your head. The people that you get connected to, you are entangled with. And many people are familiar if you think about someone you or talk about someone you haven't seen for years. And I say, oh, I haven't seen my friend John in 10 years. And the phone rings and it's John. It's like the placebo nocebo. When you think very positive thoughts of someone, they make an effort to get in touch with you. But it works both ways. If you have a negative thought about somebody, wherever they are, they will create negative talk about you. So it's very important to recognize your thoughts and your judgments are not just connected to you, they're connected to the people you talk about. You are exciting and activating those things in the world that are connected to your thoughts. When a mugger is trying to pick out which person he is going to attack, of the different people walking down the street, which one do you think gets attacked? The one who is most afraid. Because the one who is most afraid will resonate and that means that the mugger doesn't have to do anything to go boom and everyone will give him, give him everything.